All right, what's up there, SEO pros? Today we're teaching uh, my friend here, Damien, how to set up uh, content automation with uh, Pitchbox campaign. Damien, how old are you again? I am 14. He's 14, and he's going to learn how to do this uh, pretty easily, just like you guys are going to be able to use this as well afterwards. He's going to be helping me with some of these campaigns. Um, I actually just launched a campaign where I was able to add a uh, 30 new tips to a skyscraper that I've been working on. If you guys want to check it out, I just uh, relaunched it. It's called uh, uh, Underutilized White Hat SEO Techniques. It has uh, 12,700 words on it right now. Um, it's pretty beastly. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. And a lot of these uh, contributions I got, well, pretty much all of them actually, were through Pitchbox, and I'm still getting more. So uh, it's a great way to get content, and a good, good example of this, I just showed this in my last video, but I was able to rank somebody uh, number one on Google for beginner fishing tips, um, which they're pulling a lot of traffic from with this exact same method. Cool. So what you do is you log into Pitchbox, and I'll get you a login uh, after this, Damien. Um, all you do is you just press new project, and this can be pretty much used for anything, really. And it says I reached my limit, but I just upgraded it, so I don't know why it's telling me that I reached my limit. So what I'll do is um, I'll just create a new uh, campaign while this one's processing. So I'll still have the messages here. They're just not going to be showing up um, on this same campaign. So I'll press New Project. Oh my gosh, it's saying I still hit the limit. One second, let me see if I can fix this. Let's see if I delete this, if it'll get rid of it. We might have to do it through this project. won't even let me reactivate it. Are you serious? All right, well, I'll just show you an example. So if we click into one of these, um, you'll see that we are starting to do outreach uh, to people uh, with associated keywords. So I'll show you how this works. So what you do is you set up your project, and then once you set up your project, you've got to set up a campaign. Um, and then once you set up the campaign, uh, they're going to ask you for keywords. So they're going to say, do you want to do, what type of campaign do you want to do? Do you just put blogger outreach or whatever you want to do? Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, and then after that, you just add your keywords for what you're going for. So we know that we're looking for um, people to contribute their uh, tips around car insurance. So all we have to do is just look for keywords around car insurance. And what we can do is we can go over to a keyword like LSI graph. type in car insurance and this is going to give us all the different variations of this keyword so these are all the different variations except we want tips because we're looking for people to contribute their tips so we're going to put in tips so we got home insurance those are of course other related keywords car tip of the day so we'll just take something like car tip of the day and we'll plug it in here It'll start giving us ideas, and we can just plug them into here. Now, car sales tip of the day is probably not closely enough related. Uh, neither is car care tip, but car insurance tip of the day is. We'll just copy this, bring it back over here, and try a different one. And now it's giving us auto insurance. We'll take that one, plug this back over here. Same thing. So another thing we can do is we can just plug this into here in Google and scroll down and see what they're showing. Trick to lower car insurance, we'll copy that. Boom. And we can go for places like, uh, well actually you probably not want to do the UK because it might be different. So we'll just grab all of those. So now we got a good amount of keywords, so we'll press next. And uh, what's this going to do is it's going to start finding all of the websites that are ranking for these keywords. 
and it's going to show us all the information for them. So I'll show you what to do while this is going. What we want to do is we want to set up our outreach template. So we'll go to settings. And I'll help you set up a lot of this stuff, Damien. Um, I'm just showing like an overview of how it works. So you can do three different separate outreaches. You can do the first outreach on day one, the next outreach six days later, and then the third outreach 13 days later. But we're just going to go into outreach one and set that up. And now you can see I already set it up. So what this does is it starts pulling information off of these people's um, websites uh, with something called JavaScript, which is a type of coding. And what it'll do is, it, it, I already have these set up so you don't have to worry about these, but in the subject line it just automatically pulls the name of their URL, their blog name, and their first name if, if it can find any of these things. And then in the outreach template, it says, hi, first name, if it can find it. If not, it just says, hey there, my name is Chase Reiner. Here's my Facebook profile, link to my Facebook. I know you're super busy, so I'll be quick. I'm putting together a list of uh, tips around car insurance. Um, I saw that you talked about this on the blog URL. Um, so it just puts in their URL name. And I'd love to share a tip of your audience, uh, of yours with my audience, as well as backlink. I like report this for spam. You can get in trouble if you don't have this in here. Um, and I change this to, I say, don't want me to email you anymore, reply, unsubscribe, if so, in the subject line. That's pretty much all there is to it. You just press next and you can test it out so that it'll give you the different fields you put in there, so I'll put blog name, we'll say insurance blog, uh, first name we'll call him Jeff, and the opportunity URL will say insurance.com. You can see in the corner I'm getting uh, tips right here. So right here we got um, subject line insurance.com, insurance blog, Jeff. Now this might sound a little weird because it's not like, you know, it just sounds weird because it's just like different dynamically placed text. The reason why you use this is because if you use different text in the subject line and in the body each time, you're less likely to get this email flagged in the in your server, um, which will happen if you keep sending the same message over and over to, to people. Um, so that's why you want to dynamically replace these fields. So it says, hi Jeff, my name is Chase Reiner, here's my Facebook profile, yada yada, boom boom. So then you have to do is just press save template and you're good to go. So, I don't really need your help with this stuff. Damien, I'm just showing you guys how it works. Um, the thing that I do need help with is this part. So if we go back to general, or sorry, um, if we go back to the campaign, you'll see uh, it says inspect 160, so you'll see that it just pulled 160 different websites from the um, keywords we typed in. So this is the part I need your help with. So all that other stuff you don't have to worry about as much. So you can see if we filter by contacts, some of these websites have over 48 contact emails on them. We don't want to email that many people. So what we'll do is we'll delete all the ones that have, have over like 15 contacts. We'll just press delete. And then we'll click this again and press select all and move all of these over to per personalization. So now what we do is we delete all the ones with zero because they have no contact info. So we'll just delete them. And you can just keep filtering like this. Delete the zeros. And then there's only a few more, so we'll just click them out. Now, once all these zeros are deleted, um, we just need to make sure that we're not emailing a bunch of people. So you can see all these people that they only have one email on these URLs. That's fine. So we'll just grab these. Keep columnist, columnist. We just want to keep editor because that's the person who's probably going to respond to this. So then we just yeah. press submit to compose. Then we just go to the next one. So you can see we have a bunch. Um, 
I'll probably just keep the info one and then delete the rest. Um, and usually if there's a star next to it, that means there's extra information. Um, and you want to usually keep the stars because those are the people or the people who are most likely to respond. So like all of these, so content right there would probably want to keep that one. So you can see this is pretty manual. Um, but ideally we want to be able to filter through all of these. So sales, no, maybe support, I don't know, maybe that one. You kind of have to guess on some of, some of them. And so once you filter through a lot of those, what you'll end up having, having when you go back here um, and you go like this, um, those other ones already moved over to the next column, so we don't have to keep, uh, we don't have to do anything with those. So, so if we go to compose, this is the ones that only have one email now, including the ones we just filtered. So all we have to do now is just select all of these and then launch automation sequence. And this will now go out and automatically email these people at different times. And then we'll get um, tips back, hopefully. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, from that point, you can see in the inbox who's emailed back. Um, and then in there, we can just grab their tip. So we can just grab this. So this is somebody who responded. You can say, Dear Chase, that's a good question. Here's what I got. Boom. Um, and then this is the part I'll need help with next, Damien, is just grabbing all of these and putting them into a, a, a Google Doc, and I'll show you how I do it. Okay. Um, so if I go to Drive, so you can see in this one. All I did is I just put their tip in here. I would put their name, because I'll just grab their name from the email, and then their email address. Um, I should put their website in there too, but I forgot. Um, and then I just go to the next one. And the way to make sure you're not form you're not grabbing all of their weird uh, formatting or colors on their emails or whatever you know they put in their emails, if you're on a, a Mac, you do Command Shift V, and it'll take out the formatting. If you're on a uh, PC, you do Control Shift V, and it'll take out the formatting. So if I take this one in bold right here and I copy it with Control C, and then I do Control Shift V, um, it should take out the bold. Hold on. Okay, well I don't know why it's not. <laughs> should take out the bold, but um, maybe it's because it's pasting in the same place. Oh, there, it did it over here. So if I do it over here, it does it. But maybe it's because it's already formatted over here. Um, and then once we get that done, we just put that into a final Google Doc where we just then copy and paste it into the website. Uh, and, that's in it, and that's this one right here, the White Hat SEO one I showed in the beginning. Um, yeah. I just put it right in there. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Um, do you have any questions about that? Not really at the moment. I mean, was there any parts that sound confusing or? Um, I might need to know like where to move the emails, like you know how you were switching through the tabs and moving into different areas and stuff like that. Like um, like where you were looking. I, I, it's hard to explain. I don't know. Like really, I think what, I've gotten everything. The only thing I need help with right now really is just like personalizing these. Um, and then if you can start finding other keywords. So like for instance, say we did a new campaign around um, like top tips for Rust. And by the yeah. way, if you guys don't know what Rust is, it's a it's a game, it's an online game, um, which we could actually rank that for and get subscribers out of that if we made a new channel. Um, yeah. So you would do new campaign, you'd do blo blogger outreach, you would name it Rust, You'd look for keyword suggestions, so uh, tips for Rust, get ideas, and then it would give us different ideas. So tips for Rust PVP, tips for Rust beginners, tips for Rust 2017. Then we would press next. 
And like before, it's going to pull all of the different websites associated with that, who, anybody who's talking about it. While that's running, we would set up our template. Um, and then I literally just copy over the other template and then just change a few of the words. Once that's good, we just go back to the um, to the to the personalization fields, and then we just filter out all of the ones where it's like tons of uh, uh, like emails. We don't want to email like 30 people at once off of one website. Once we find like you know enough websites with only one contact, then we just launch the automation sequence, and then we just wait to hear back from them in the inbox. Uh, we just grab their tip and then plug it into uh, Google Doc. Pretty easy, right? It's, it's nah, I get it a lot better now. It makes more sense when it's like with something that you actually know. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoy these videos, let me know by leaving a like. And until I see you guys next time, happy SEO.